Lashana Tova. Shana Tova, thank you, thank you. I'm going to tell you a story. And the story takes place once upon a time, a long, long time ago, in a land far, far away. And in this land far, far away, there was a little town. And in that town, there were many, many Jews. And those Jews loved to celebrate Shabbat. They loved to make challah. They loved to read Torah. And they loved to celebrate the holidays. Now, this story takes place on Rosh Hashanah. And isn't that convenient? Because it is Rosh Hashanah. Now, on Rosh Hashanah, the people of this town were doing all the things that you do on Rosh Hashanah. They were coming to synagogue. They were praying. They were singing. They were dipping apples and honey. And they were gathering with their family and dear friends. But they weren't that happy. And you know why they weren't that happy? I'm going to tell you. Because they heard that the king of the province was coming to town that day. And whenever the king of the province came, it was never for anything good because the king was not very friendly with the Jews. And let me tell you, this day was not any different. The king of the town came to the town square and said to the people, now I know it's Rosh Hashanah and you are doing all the things that you would normally do on Rosh Hashanah, like going to synagogue and praying and singing and dipping apples and honey and gathering with your family and friends. But I have a question for you. And this is my question. If you say your God is all powerful and all knowing, but that your God is invisible. I want to know, how does your God see God's self? I know how I see myself, and I bet you know how you see yourself. But if your God is invisible, how does God see God's self? You have seven days to answer this question, and if I don't get a satisfactory answer, I am closing the synagogue for Yom Kippur. You will not be able to celebrate. Well, you can imagine the people were just beside themselves. This was a really, really tough question. How does God see God's self? We know God is all-powerful, we know God is all-knowing, and we know God is invisible. God must be able to see God's self, but how? The people didn't know what to do, and so naturally, they went to the rabbi. So they walked over to the rabbi's house, they knocked on her door, and they said, Rabbi, Rabbi, please let us in. And the rabbi opened the door and she said, well, Shana Tova, hello everybody. I just finished my Rosh Hashanah prayers. How can I help you? And they said, Rabbi, Rabbi, the king just came to the town and asked us this really, really tough question. And the question was, if God is all-knowing and God is all-powerful, all powerful, but God is invisible, how does God see God's self? Rabbi, we only have seven days to answer this question, and if we don't answer it satisfactorily, the king is going to close the synagogue for Yom Kippur. We can't let that happen. The rabbi said, wow, that is a tough question. Guys, I'm going to need some time. I'm going to need some time to think about this. I, I, I promise you, I, I'm going to think of the answer. I'm going to work really, really hard. And so the rabbi went to the temple, and she prayed. She prayed for the answer, but it didn't come. She walked around in circles, thinking, how could I think of an answer? And it didn't come. And she decided, like so many rabbis before her, she would go into the forest and think about and meditate on this question. 
how does God see God's self? So she went into the forest. She found a beautiful patch of land under the trees and by a beautiful bed of flowers. And she meditated like so many rabbis had before her. And she thought for one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days. And let me tell you, she couldn't think of the answer. Oh, this rabbi was so sad. She knew she had to go back to the town because that deadline was coming. And she knew she had to go back and face the people, but she felt so bad because she knew they were counting on her for this answer. But she just couldn't think of how God could see God's self. So anyways, the rabbi cleaned up her spot in the forest. She left it just as it was when she came. She picked up all of her garbage, put it in her bag. She started walking back to the town. She decided to take the long way because maybe uh, there was a chance that she could think of the answer then. And she decided to pass the school where she teaches Torah. And as she passed the school, she saw one of her students. It was a little boy. And the little boy said, Rabbi, Shana Tova. And she said, well, Shana Tova to you. And he said, Rabbi, you seem very sad. She said, well, I am. And she told the little boy the story of how the king came to town on Rosh Hashanah and asked this question, if God is all-knowing and God is all-powerful, but God is invisible, how does God see God's self? And he said, you're sad about that? You don't know the answer to that question? And she said, no, I've been trying to think of it for the last six days. I can't seem to get an answer. And he said, well, Rabbi, that's funny because I know the answer. And she said, you do? And he said, I know the answer because you taught me in class. And she said, I did? He said, Rabbi, you taught us that everybody is made with Selim Elohim. Everybody is made in the image of God. We all have a tiny, tiny spark of God inside us. And so if God wants to see God's self, all God has to do is look at us. We are God's mirror. And the rabbi was stunned. She couldn't believe it. She said, oh my God. Gosh, I had forgotten that I taught you this story. I had forgotten this lesson. I'm so, so grateful I ran into you. And she gave the little boy a high five, and she ran over to the king's palace. She knocked on the palace door and asked to see the king, and she told the king her answer. And she said, King, I have an answer for you. If God wants to see God's self, all God has to do is look at us. We are God's mirror. And you want to know something? The king thought this was a brilliant answer. He was satisfied, and he said to the rabbi, because you came with, to me with such a wise answer, I will keep the synagogue open for Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur was saved, and all was well in the town. And from that day forward, Everybody in the town remembered this very, very important lesson that we are all made with Selim Elohim, that we all have a piece of God within us. And therefore, because we are all made with Selim Elohim, everybody deserves respect. Everybody deserves kindness. Everybody deserves compassion and love. And on this Rosh Hashanah, as we begin the new year, as we see uh, a new year ahead of us and start with a clean slate and try to be our best selves, I want all of you to remember that you are made with Selim Elohim. And not only you, your families, your parents, your children, your grandchildren, your siblings, your teachers, your friends, Everyone you see on the street, everyone you see in your buildings, they are all made 
B'Tselem Elohim, and therefore they all deserve love and kindness and respect and generosity. And today on Rosh Hashanah, and not just on Rosh Hashanah, but every day, I want you to remember that when God wants to see God's self, all God has to do is look at us. And so today and every day, I want you to practice being your very, very best self and showing the very, very best of you, your loving, loving heart, your helping hands, your kind spirit. Because when we show the very best of us, we show the very best of God. Shana tova umetuka, a happy and sweet new year. May our mirrors shine with love and kindness and joy and compassion today and every day.